Well, welcome to another edition of A Closer Look podcast, where Pastor David and I sit and chat about uh, the sermon and things from Sunday morning. I'm Jason Smith, and it's good to be with you on this Monday morning. Monday How are you morning. doing? I'm doing doing well. Doing yeah. well. A little tired this morning. You know, okay. big day yesterday. We had our connection groups in the evening, yeah. and so always a sweet time, but full days. Full, full days. days. Full days. So yeah. yesterday we picked back up in Luke. Yay! Back in Luke. And we saw Jesus for the first time, at least in Luke, as an adult. Right. And uh, we talked about John again, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, great message. Uh as we always start off, what's something that you had to cut or something you wanted to expand on that time didn't allow from yeah. yesterday's sermon? Yeah, no, I think one of the things that, you know, a part of it was reviewing, you know, a mm-hmm. message from a number of weeks ago. And so uh, there's that middle section that just I was only able to briefly kind of get into that. Uh, I think it's verses 19 through 21. Uh, or verse, verse 19 and 20, which talks about uh, when John gets arrested by Herod mm. and, th- and thrown in prison. Mm. And um, I had some notes more like on the, the historicity of that Herod. Um, and again, you have to remember that there was a Herod that killed all the babies in Bethlehem. Okay. And that's not the Herod that's mentioned not the same there, guy. same guy. And so I was going to talk maybe a little bit about that, but we're going to come back to him again. Okay. Um, and uh, we're going to come back to John while he's, he's in prison. And so I think it's helpful to know just a little bit about the dynamics yeah. that were there. Cause you know, John's life was, was short, you know, um, a little bit shorter than Jesus's, uh, you know, as best we can tell John the Baptist and Jesus were about six months apart. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, he gets, you know, arrested by Herod and, and, um, it's because he was preaching out very strongly. Hmm. Some have even said, and I'm not going to get into this, okay. um, like what he had to say to Herod about his wickedness was true. Okay. But some scholars have wondered how much of the way that John the Baptist went about um, going after Herod Mm -hmm. was what God wanted him to do versus Mm -hmm. like we we knew that John will always decrease. We knew that he wasn't Mm -hmm. the end. Jesus was was the end. But um, I don't know. There. When I can read John's story and when he gets thrown in prison, I'm like, was there a way that he could have preached against or gone against Herod and maybe not so much of a inflammatory mm, way, mm, potentially? Mm, but uh, I don't know. I'll leave mm, that to, to God and the scholars. But yeah. that's something. Again, like I'm not going to talk about that in the message yeah, you know, yeah, fully, yeah. but like yeah. here, um, it's interesting when you go and you look at the other gospels and what they have to say about it. So okay. that's yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. A, little, a little extra. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. extra on the side. Uh, a question that kind of rises from yesterday mm. is uh, we talked about the baptism of Jesus yep. and that the Holy Spirit, it says, descended like a dove. Yes. Um, and then you said, well, it, it doesn't mean that he came as a dove, but, but it, 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 can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, because that's yeah. a little confusing. Yeah, so the, so the Greek is really interesting there. And over time, the Holy Spirit has been pictured and certain mm-hmm. even denominations or a certain church that I won't name like has as their primary emblem, a a dove. And, uh, and the Greek is very clear. The Holy Spirit did not take the bodily form of a dove and descended Hmm. on Jesus. Hmm. It said the Holy Spirit took bodily form like a dove. And that, that, that word there for, for like, or as it, it really, it's, it refers to his descent as he came down. It would have had the appearance mm. of a dove. There was motion that was involved, that the Holy Spirit took some kind of physical, tangible form, but it was like a dove. It doesn't say that he turned into a dove and came, yeah. <laughs> you know, rested on Jesus kind yeah, of a thing, yeah. as, as some perceive. And so, look, is that a big deal? It's, it's not a big deal, but I think that... Um, you know, you can say, oh, God took on an animal shape, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, or like he inhabited mm-hmm. a, uh, an animal. And I'm just, we don't want to, we don't want to go there. We just want to okay. say what the scriptures say. It was like, like a dove. dove. It took on this form that you saw, it. just like in the book of Revelation, it talks about when Jesus uh, on his throne in Revelation chapter four, people look at him and he had the appearance of precious stones. Mm, it doesn't mm, say that mm. he was a precious stone. It says he has the, he had the appearance of, cause that's the only thing that the writers could compare it to. Okay. So yeah. I don't know. It's just, uh, you just don't want to take it further than, and, and why a dove too, by the way, like that's why it's important to say like, he didn't actually take the, the bodily form of a dove, but it appeared as a dove would, would come mm-hmm. down because 
Um, I've heard people say, oh, it's because the Holy Spirit is meek and because the Holy Spirit mm. is gentle. Mm. Because, and, and they make all these assumptions. And the Bible doesn't tell us anything that. about yeah. why, that, yeah. why that was. It was just this idea that you understood that something supernatural was coming upon Jesus. And Luke knows, and in John's gospel we know, and in Matthew's gospel we know, oh, that thing was actually the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So, hmm. I don't know. That's, that's, really, that's, yeah, that's something to think about. Um, and, oh, and, and you mentioned yesterday in, in, um, in the sermon uh, something that really, I think we have an identity issue sometimes. And, mm-hmm. and so I'm going to allow you to expand on this. But um, it, it talks about that we as Christians through Christ Jesus, yeah. are, we are the righteousness of God. And, and here, here's yeah. what I bring that up. Because as believers sometimes, and, and this happens quite a bit, we kind of push back on that a little bit and say, well, God sees me as righteous yeah. through Christ Jesus. Right. True. But True. also right here, the, the passage says mm-hmm. that we are the righteous of God. Help, help me think through that. Yeah. You and I have talked about this pastorally a lot. And uh, a little while back, it kind of came up in uh, Luke's gospel. When we we're talking about the the passive obedience versus mm, the active mm, obedience mm. of Jesus. And so the active obedience of Jesus we're talking about is the righteousness that he gives us. Mm. And a lot of Christians, and I find this, we find this in counseling. I find this in conversation. Whenever I bring this up to say, you are a saint, Mm -hmm. you are not perceived by God as a saint. God doesn't just simply view you as righteous in Jesus Christ. The declaration is you are righteous. You have a righteousness Mm. that's not your own, but it is yours today. And so when we were in Ephesians, we talked a lot about that. It's like, we are, are saints. And what we find that when you talk to people is that they'll often be like, well, I know God sees me as righteous, but I fill in the blank, Mm -hmm. but I still, and it's like, that is something that we have to throw away from our Christian thinking. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't view yourself as actually being a saint or actually being righteous, actually having your sins be wiped away. See, you are, uh, remember, uh, this was a while ago. You are not a saint with the potential, or you're not a sinner with the potential to yes, be righteous, yes, right? Yeah. You are a saint yes. with the potential to sin. Yes. Like that, that mindset is, is so huge. And so, um, we excuse sin. Mm. We will excuse sin. If I am not an actually a righteous person, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. will think that, well, that's just who I am. That's just my old. Se- Wait a second. Did you hear what you said? That's your old self. Behold, the new has come new is has not come. coming has come. So you've entered into that. And, um, and so I think you're right. We do have an identity issue at times. There are too many Christians who go about believing that, um, glorification is the ultimate. Yeah. And what I mean by the ultimate is I don't have to worry about my righteousness now. You know, God sees me as righteous. That's great. You know, I don't see myself as righteous. And so I can just go out and do whatever I want. No, you are righteous today. Mm -hmm. Glorification. Mm -hmm. Christ has taken care of the penalty and the power of sin over us. It literally said in the text when we looked at Galatians yesterday, right? We are no longer slaves. Yes. Yes. The presence of sin will be done away with at our glorification. Mm -hmm. But right now, make no excuse for your sin. Don't just look at you saying, but I'm unrighteous. You are not unrighteous. It's not just mm. that God perceives you that way. You are the righteousness of God mm-hmm. today. I mean, that's awesome news. That is, is great, great news. We too, as I said, have the spirit that indwells us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, Paul prays. The one thing I pray for you is that you would know that the power that raised Christ from the dead in Ephesians chapter three is the same power that is at work within you. He wants mm-hmm. us to, to know that. Why? Because we don't live in it. We don't live in it. So as you're saying that, I'm thinking of growing up, sometimes there are friends who are really close mm. and people would say, oh, they're like one of the family. Yeah. yeah, yeah and they'd mm-hmm. be like, hey, those people, they're like one of them. They're like my parents, right? right. Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes as we look at Christianity, mm-hmm. I, I'm like part of the family instead of, instead of being one who actually, so that same people, if, if my parents were to adopt them. Yes. They would no longer be like yeah. one of them. They would be. And, and they, we are adopted. We are adopted. But we still sometimes act like, well, I'm like one of the family. Yeah. No, no, no. You've been adopted. You are. Yeah. He is yeah. your heavenly father. Yeah. Which you, you alluded to that. And I'm going to look at my notes real quick to yeah. quote you, right? But it, you said that um, Jesus had communion with and the acceptance of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And that we mm-hmm. have that same relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. Yes. So we yes. have him as Abba Father. We right. get to call out to him. 
but some still may wrestle with mm -hmm. how do we balance out or what is, what do we do with that? We have him as a relational father, yet he still is the Holy God. How do we mm -hmm. approach him mm -hmm. as a Holy God and our heavenly father? Yeah. I mean, that comes up even a little bit as we were working the text that it's about, you know, the superiority of Jesus. It kind of mm. works like, here's Jesus. Mm. Think about John. John's like, I shouldn't be able to untie Jesus' sandal, mm -hmm. right? Because he has this idea of, of who he is. And yet Jesus is our, is our brother, yet he's superior. And that's where we understand God is our father, but he's mm -hmm. also the ruler over everyone and, and everything. And, and, you know, how do we hold those two things kind of intention you know we're called to have the fear of the lord mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and so there's this idea of and th so this is how i work this through because i think the scriptures uh talk about even in our blessed study we actually we looked at it um here's the interesting thing in the blessed study that we're that we're doing mm -hmm. and if you're in a connect group you'll you'll know about this there's the uh the parable later in luke about the impudent uh person who who keeps who, when jesus is teaching them to pray he mm -hmm. says mm -hmm be like somebody who keeps going to their father over and over again, asking, asking, asking. And yeah. so like God is the father who can do all things, invites us to come to him. Yet as we come to him, we need to remember like who he is. He's got the ability to do what we cannot do. Um, and even, I think even the earthly father illustration works. Like if you have a good father, you can understand this, you know, they love and they care, but they're still your dad. Mm. And, uh, and so there is that respect. There's that the, reverence yes. that, that needs to come that, that my love, my dad, I, I'm blessed. I have a wonderful yes. relationship with, with my father. You know, uh, he was affectionate. He was also stern when he needed mm -hmm. to be And that, that understand, yes, I'm going to give you a hug mm -hmm. yet at the same point, I have the right to discipline. Yes. I have the right, you know, to correct. Um, and it is contingent upon me as the son to accept those things yes. and not live in rebellion to him. <laughs> you know, and, and so, yes. so it's like, I know that I can receive the affection of the father, but he has right and claim over my life and he must be obeyed. Yes. And as your heavenly father is holy, so you too be mm -hmm. holy. And, and so, you know, keeping those things. So, so, uh, you know, some people, they need to hear. Some people, they, they can only see God as this God of judgment. Mm -hmm. And so they have to come to him and they have to know a little bit more about his love and the compassion that he welcomes them in. And then other people, you want to be careful that your familiarity with God yes. yeah. isn't such that you don't take him as Isaiah said, holy, holy, holy yeah. is the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. 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 So I love that tension. That's a good tension. It's, no, it's, it's, it's a good one to wrestle with. To, 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 to wrestle through. with. Yeah. And unfortunately, our, our fathers have a lot of play in how we feel Absolutely. what we understand a father to be, but he is the ultimate perfect father. Yeah, he, he is. And we can swing and we have to know that about ourselves, you know, so don't never overemphasize one aspect of who God is over, mm. over the other, mm. you know, because you got to take him in his fullness. Yeah. yeah great. Good, yeah. great. Anything else? For yeah. thing yesterday? You, you know, I was thinking about this um, and we'll come to it later as well. And that's the beautiful thing about preaching through Luke is like, I kind of know what's going to be coming. Yep. And so yep. there's things I want to say. And sometimes I'll say it kind of to tee it up, but just briefly, just, we kind of looked at, you know, Jesus was praying in our passage, right? As he was being baptized, he says, you know, coming up out of the water, you know, as he was praying. Hmm. And one of the things that people say is like, okay, I get why Jesus was baptized, but didn't need to be right. It's hmm. like, what's the perfect hmm. son of God? Hmm. Why does why does God the Son need to be praying? Isn't he one with, yeah, with the Father? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll hit this again. It won't be the last time. But I think just that rem the reminder of Jesus in his humanity mm -hmm. was both demonstrating for us and in his humanity living in the reality of what are a human relationship yeah. with God what you need. And, you know, he didn't disconnect, you know, he didn't lean upon his oneness with the father, right? The, yes, that he, yes. he, he showed us. Great point. Yeah. I told my connection group last night, I said, could you imagine if, G if we never had an example of Jesus praying? Like if he never prayed in the gospel, what would we think about prayer? Hmm. Hmm. We, you know, he, he shows us like, yes, even in my humanity, I don't even, even though I'm the son of God, this is so necessary for your communion with, with the mm. father. And so he models it for us and he engages in it because he needs it. Yeah. And if he needs it, who am I to think? Nope. Don't need to pray. You know, yeah. yeah all the more. No. It, it takes that, the knowledge of who we are in Christ. It takes that 
that knowledge that relationship and makes it relational. Like it puts it into practice. It puts for it into us. practice. She shows us exactly. Yeah. 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 Great. No. Well, uh, since you know things that are coming up, can you yeah. give us a tease about this next coming oh my gosh. Sunday? So uh, Sunday's really going to be interesting. Okay. I'm going to preach something I've never preached in all, right. all the messages. Um, we're going to be looking at a genealogy on okay. Sunday. Okay. And so and so begets so and so begets so and so begets. And so that's going to be fun to, to look at. And uh, I've, I, you know, I, I have an idea of where I'm going and some okay. of the points, but uh, how we're going to go through it. So, so that looks good. Yeah. And then, uh, we are going to take a little break. Um, I'm going to be here, but I'll be off that, that week right before Palm Sunday. And so, mm-hmm. uh, Palm Sunday is going to be a unique message, um, where, uh, we're going to, we're going to stay in Luke and okay. we're going to be in, uh, Luke four and we're going to be looking at the temptation of Jesus. Um, and then what's going to be so neat about this is like, we're going to look at Palm Sunday, um, is the last week of Jesus's life mm. and ministry. The temptation mm-hmm. of Jesus is the kind of the first ministerial mm-hmm. thing that we see Jesus engaging in. So we're going to hold these two things and, mm-hmm. and we're going to, we're going to look at like, Oh, look how Luke records here. And so we'll look at the temptation of Jesus yeah. and that, that'll be a, that'll be an interesting Palm Sunday, but I think it'll be good. Uh, both will be interesting because as people generally read the Bible, genealogies yeah. are skipped, skip, over. skipped over sermons, you skip over yeah. it, but it is still inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's still God's word. Yeah. And there's a very specific reason why it's there. And there's yes. some very specific things that we learn what's trying to communicate. I'll just be honest. If you follow the podcast, you'll, you'll get to see what I do on Sunday, but I'm trying to think of, will we read the entire genealogy mm. or just, or just part of it come Sunday what and find will out we do? Well, what will we do? I don't, I don't quite know what, what'll, what'll fit. What, oh, you know, what man. Want so, yeah, man. Well, we're looking forward to yeah. it either way. Well, thanks again for sitting with me every yeah, week in these appreciate. conversations. I know they're, they're great for me. They're great for those who listen. Helps so. me reflect and even ponder these things again. So it's good. That's and and good. if you let's say this from time to time, yeah. if you have questions from the sermon, uh, please send us that at questions at vccc.org. And even not questions from yeah. the, uh, from the yeah. message. Any, it can other, be any other you know, yeah. question that you want to consider. Comes, so. Yeah. So, yeah, well, we time. love you church family. We love hope you. you have a great week. See you Sunday. God bless.